Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today for a super exciting exclusive featuring this, the McLaren Solus GT. This car is going up the hill climb here at the 2023 Goodwood Festival of Speed and my cameras are about to bring you along for an experience on board McLaren's single seat Ultimate Series top toy. This is a little bit crazy. There's a race derived V10. It sounds like that. Let's take a look around. I'm going to be able to step in it later to show you the inside and let's go for a ride together in the Solus GT. This car is currently being warmed up ahead of a run out and I want to show you a few things quickly before we actually find out more. Listen to that. Absolutely definite. But an evolution of the 2017 Vision Gran Turismo car brought to real life with 25 units. I saw it at the unveiling at the Quail during Car Week last year in California. You have that single seat with the canopy that slides over forwards. The 5.2 litre V10 engine makes over 800 horsepower. Quite a few people from those 25 customers are people I filmed with before the likes of Manny Koshbin, Triple F Collection. We have my friend RM Collection as well. But this thing is wild. So to find out a little bit more about it before we pop the cameras in and take you up the hill climb, let's join Fred from the team at McLaren to learn all about this. We're joined now by Fred, product manager behind the Solus GT. And I've got to say, firstly, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing to win it. Um, we, we set a really good time today and uh, we beat some great cars. So, yeah, really, really The happy. winning car of the 2023 shootout here at the Festival of Speed. The time? Uh, 45.3. That's so very incredibly happy with that. fast. And this is it. We're going to take a quick look around to run through it because this is a car you've clearly been working on for a while, but it's also a first from game to reality. Yeah, the first ever car to come from uh, that game concept all the way through to production. Uh, and we're, we're going into production now for 25 of. Over the years, we've seen some unbelievable machines in Gran Turismo, the Vision GTs, but this is the very first time one of those has transposed itself onto the actual tarmac into yeah, reality. Yeah, and we, we went from that concept, we, we left a couple of things in the game, but uh, when you put these two cars side by side, they, they, you, you can tell that's where it actually came from. So quick recap of what we're looking at. Obviously, single seat, V10. Yeah. Run us through a little bit of powertrain. So yeah, 5.2 litre naturally aspirated. It screens to more than 10,000 RPM, which <laughs> makes an incredible noise, both inside and outside the car. And very different noises as well. Really clean inside the car and outside the car, it's got that real raspy, you know, on the, on the overrun, it just sounds absolutely incredible. It's a bespoke 10-cylinder, um, it's 800 plus horsepower. Uh, yeah, 840 PS, um, 650 newton meters of torque, um, and uh, yeah, it gives a VMAX of more than 200 miles an hour. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's quick. And clearly aero is a big thing here. Obviously, yeah. lots Massive of cutaways aero. and openings. Downforce? We're way above our target. We had a target of 1,200, we're way above that. We think more than, well, I won't say the numbers, but we're way Over above. Over 1,200 kilos of downforce. Least, easily, easily. Big, big numbers. Yeah. So obviously... So it's all... So it's all created by this front wing is bitter, mm -hmm. and then the airflow all the way under the car makes massive, massive ground effect. Really, really, um, really, really impressive uh, downforce numbers. It must be quite fascinating to be able to create something like this without having to meet regulations of a race series. Well, that's it. We're free from all of those regulations, so we're not homologated for any race series. This will never, this will never race. This is a track uh, toy, the uh, ultimate. And, yeah, and it's not road legal either, so we haven't got those regulations. So we were, we were free to build what we thought embodies everything that McLaren is about. Uh, and that's all about the driver experience. That's that customer experience. And, uh, and I, think we've, I think we've got there with us. It's such a big departure from the other road cars that have been lined up here in the paddock. But obviously with McLaren's racing history, heritage, knowledge, F1, all of the other different racing, you can create this. And as, I mean, looking around it and walking around it, I know there are some unreal angles that you see through the car. The yeah, obviously the airflow through here is really important. We've got the barge balls to clean up the airflow around the uh, around that full length floor uh, and the rear diffuser. And come back here and the size of the wing and the size of the, the, the channels underneath the car. Yeah, no, that, that, that's where all the downforce is created and that's the most efficient place to create that downforce. Very little drag. This is, it's, you can spend forever looking at it. And I mean, everybody here, you've had a constant stream of people coming by and just noticing now how everyone's tucking their heads through to try and figure <laughs> it all out. Um, and then there's the, the canopy. Canopy slides forwards. Yes. Yeah, let's we, have a look at that. 
pop it, pop it open. So this is a... um, this is a really cool feature of the car. It's real fighter jet style. You release from in front. The release from in front or on the canopy release here on the sides. There's one on each side on the exterior, uh, and then of course a, a canopy release on the interior as well. And then so the we've got the central seat. It's bespoke molded around every customer, so it's the most comfortable place you can possibly be. We we did a lot of work on the driver position, and, and it's not like any other car you'll ever drive because of that central seat, that closed cockpit, that incredible vision from one extreme all the way through to the other. You've got this tub bar in front of you. That's it. That's a rollover um, okay. rollover protection structure, but you don't see that when you're out on the circuit or. Uh, or out on the hill climb, uh, you don't see that. You're never looking straight. You're always looking at the apex or the corner exit. So is this the very car that we've seen testing around the world? Yeah, we've been doing loads of kilometers in this. Uh, we've been all around Europe, various circuits, doing a lot of durability, dynamics work, uh, electrical testing, you know, everything um, to make sure this, customer is, uh, this car is right for the customers. And getting it ready for 25 very lucky people. So I think very shortly, you're gonna allow me to step inside here. Yes, but right. be before we get to that, I think we need to let the viewers experience it and come along okay. for the little ride. So we will hop to that. Let's take on board a quick run in the Solus GT. A quick breather, ready and raring to head up the hill climb, but here in the line of cars, in fact, a pretty spectacular line of McLarens. If we come through and come past up the line a little bit, past the new 750S, the McLaren Senna just here. In front, we have the Elva with the windshield, the P1, and the original 12C up ahead, leading this lineup of the cars. 750S making its dynamic debut here, and all of this obviously sandwiched with things like the GM80 50, the Mercedes AMG 1 with the Formula One engine. New Lamborghini Revuelto just on the other side, the other Lambos come through, we've got the Pagani Utopia, the pre-production not yet unveiled, Mercedes AMG GT, Ramaz Navira, the Pininfarina Batista, Pagani Huayra R, the Hispano Suiza, and then of course this that we're about to be experiencing, hearing, the visceral symphony that this is about to be making. Crazy to think that it's gone from, well, imagination to reality. McLaren Solus GT, look at this, obviously running on the wet tyres. Considering today's conditions, as opposed to the slicks that you'd normally find, but full race car. Race car with rules removed. Everything unleashed, ready and raring for action. The canopy ready to slide backwards. What's going on from here? That's going to be a wild ride, and very shortly, making its way up towards the front, ready for this run to commence.
Well, I don't need to tell you how epic that sounded from on board the McLaren Solus GT here at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. This is one of the other cars as well we can quickly look at here at the McLaren stand, where we also have the new 750S, the Uniclinic F1 GTR over that way, a Senna MP44 just here as well. But this is actually the first customer Solus GT. Just imagine when you're driving in this thing, listening to what you've just heard. That V10 screaming up the Festival of Speed hill climb, an iconic piece of tarmac in one of these. Of course, a thing that's built for Grand Prix circuits rather than the type of tarmac you have here with the crown in the road as more very loud race cars are going up over on the hill climb. But this looks the part, this thing is absolutely unreal. And now we've heard it as well, that was good. I've also got to very quickly talk about this. The F1 GTR that won that famous race, the 24 Hours of Le Mans, back in 1995, here alongside some absolute supercar, hypercar, race car royalty at the Festival of Speed. But it's not every day that you get to see something like this. And of course, over on the other side, the Senna F1 car as well. We are spoiled at this event. One of the things that will be very interesting is how each customer will, of course, choose their individual specification. No two cars will be exactly the same. This one in the metallic orange, perhaps McLaren Volcano Orange, maybe it's the paintwork on this, and you can see the way that the separation is created with the carbon fiber, the Zero One graphics, MSO graphic. Look at all of this with the exposed carbon and these different lines that have been done by the paint team with MSO, and then the interior to match the car as well. This stripe that carries through over the top of the canopy, down the front past the suspension towards the nose with the exposed carbon over the complete carbon bodywork. In fact, even for these sections, full carbon panels, leaving that area masked up for the painting. It's always amazing to see when you have the result. And look at these colors, look at the pearlescent nature of this paint the bright glossy glows that you get, those yellow metallic areas popping, looks amazing. And knowing where this car is going to be heading and the collection it's going to, it will certainly be in some very good company. You join us back in the paddock then. We are late in the day, but it's time to experience Yeah, let's get you this... in, let's get you in. So let's get the steering wheel off first. It's gonna be easier to, to do that. So no. left foot on the knacker duck, which um, doubles so up as a, as a step. A step, hand and up then, on the top. Yeah, that's fine. And then both, seat, uh, both feet in the seat. Step on the seat, and then. And then slide yourself down. This is a bizarre feeling. <laughs> Gently does it. Let's get nice some and of snug. out behind you. That's wow! It, just rested outside. Wow! So yeah, as I say, every uh, every seat moulded around the uh, around the customer. This is a bizarre feeling, especially with the canopy forward. It's so far out in front it of you. It is far out in front of you. Obviously, the view and just seeing it doesn't. You can't relate it to anything else. It doesn't feel like anything else. No, as, as I say, it's unique. Um, that that closed cockpit and that central driver position. Um, we've got this kind of F1 inspired steering wheel. This is yep. the final production wheel. Okay. Uh, this is one we've been doing all of our, our development testing on, but the the kind of the layout is very similar. So everything accessible to yep. the, to the driver's thumbs um, and and a couple of rotaries to change settings of the car. Wow, I, I'm just imagining being Marvin right now, <laughs> <laughs> hopping behind the wheel and driving up the hill. Rear view and screen then, up here. So okay. Rear view camera, no wing mirrors. Okay. So there's a um, camera behind. Yeah, and a really wide angle screen, so you can uh, you can really get a good field of vision behind you. Can this close? Cut the canopy. Yeah, maybe I should pull the camera inside so I can show what it looks like from inside here when we slide the canopy back to bring you guys in to see what this is like. So, tuck down. Wow. <laughs> that is bizarre. That is absolutely bizarre. Inside here, as you mentioned, you completely lose the blade in front of you. Just full carbon fiber everywhere. Just looking around, obviously I'm in harnesses in my seat. Switch gear up top, the release right up above me. And I'm just cocooned in, obviously ankles at the same kind of height as my hips down here in the footwell. And then release the canopy. 
it slides back forwards. <laughs> That's not a normal like feeling. It's just right star, right? That's unreal. But it's a great driving position, isn't it? The vision it all feels... the way from one side to the other. You've got the, fr the front fenders there that's kind of flared yep. up above. That's kind of giving you a reference point for the car. Um, it's just the perfect position to be in. So every customer will have a seat molded for them. Yep. I think full gear and helmet and... Yeah, they get all of that as well. All yeah, the nice yeah, suit yeah. and stuff to match. Yeah. And I'm just sat inside here. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the feeling. I'm it's not comfortable, like, isn't it? Yeah, this is... Oh, I mean, this is... It's almost amazing by the minimalism of it all. Yeah. I mean, just a few power and emergency buttons, just steering wheel. Exactly, the focus is on, on driving the car. And that's basically it. There's nothing really else yeah. to this or what's inside it. Um, I suppose the next challenge is the stepping out Getting part. Out. <laughs> <laughs> so this. wheel out, kind of. Same again. Hoist yourself backwards. Stand and on the just seat. jump out. It's actually quite easy. Yeah, it's not too bad. And then you can just swing all the way. Yeah. That was easier than I expected. Far easier than I expected. I mean, we're presuming every kind of telemetry and data yeah, is set we, up for we, a... Yeah, we've got uh, data logging and, uh, and onboard camera. So, uh, yeah, drivers can go through that and match it up to their, their data. So what's required in terms of a crew to run the car, or is it quite... It can be it can be as little or as much as the customer wants. You yeah. Know, we, to get the most out of the car, a couple of techs and, and, a, and a race engineer and, yep. and maybe a driver coach as well to really yep. kind of get that full experience. And, you know, take them through to, to you know maximising the potential of the car. This is unreal. I've got to say congratulations to you and the well, whole team you. again. What a what a thing! Thank you for letting me take a look and pop the cameras on board. I'm I'm gonna just like think about this for a little bit more. <laughs> and I've, I've heard it going past, so I know. Makes How great crazy noise, it is, but no, yeah, thank you. mega. As I'm just looking around this a little bit more, it's things like these shapes, obviously for cooling, but also representative of the speed mark, the McLaren graphic that obviously you find on the logo of the car. Then you just take in the aero, and back at the time when the Vision Gran Turismo had been introduced, the McLaren Senna followed, of course, the Ultimate Series road car. But this is a completely different level. I think that's almost a response to trying to make something so close to what the game offered. And there are so many elements. Obviously, this car is on the wet tires at the moment, considering the variable weather that's been had around here over the last days. But if I just stick my camera around and through, just so you can see the suspension components inside here, the extra different aero veins and guides and everything that's going on within this. And from inside, when you're sat in that seating position, you can see the high point of the front wheel arches to obviously position and place the car completely perfectly just to show you the logo on the front with the speed mark graphic that I mentioned and then down at the very front of the car the complete nose is obviously hanging down it's open underneath the teardrop cabin for the optimum airflow and management all the way around to the end plates on the side and obviously running on available tires to be able to pop on it all with a screaming screaming V10 now we've been lucky to get this access to this car here at the Festival of Speed. But really and truly, I mean, look at the exposed suspension components through the front of it. Built-in telemetry, cameras, all positioned within the car itself. Even here, just the swooping. This is very F1-style bodywork around the sides, opening up to the wheels. Obviously closed wheel arches as opposed to an open single-seater. But really, the ultimate expression of what is possible, what McLaren could do, with something like this, you just check out that angle. What a machine, what a thing. The fact that this exists, it's one of those things. It's just awesome. Just so you can see from the outside, when the canopy is slid back and popped down in place, that's what the car is like. Windshield wiper in the center, that incredibly narrow aerodynamic cockpit running all the way from the front. That is, yeah, that is quite the cool shape isn't it, when you look at this thing. What an amazing thing this is, and what an opportunity as well, being here at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. A huge congratulations to Marvin at the wheel, to Fred, to all of the team on winning the shootout with their Solus GT. I mean, you just look at this car, and it's, it's so different from anything else. There's so much to it, obviously, that we can barely begin to scratch on the surface of. This has been about sharing the experience, bringing you guys along to hear the sound, to hear this thing screaming as it's been driven up the Festival Speed Hill Climb. Of course, congratulations to some of my friends who have purchased one of the 25 
each of these. Let's hope we're going to be seeing some really cool videos and see the cars out and about on the roads, well, on the tarmac, I should say, of the race circuits where they can participate across the world. I don't think we've really mentioned that the step down here where literally it's a knacker duct for cooling, but serves a dual purpose of also being a step to enter the Solus GT. And that's the kind of thing with this, keeping it all as minimalistic as possible, clean surfaces, aerodynamic, slippery through the air, but having that engine, that screaming race V10, which just sounds out of this world. Anyway, things are quickly wrapping up here. The car needs to be taken away actually in a couple of minutes. It's going to be heading up to Goodwood House to celebrate its success winning the shootout. But for now, I think that is all. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.